Welcome to Money Congos, where we discuss personal finance and investment tips. We are committed to helping people create wealth and achieve financial freedom. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast. Alright then, let's head into today's conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to today's conversation. Hello, Dennis. How are you doing? Hi, Elika. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm okay. I'm all right, my brother. Uh, how, how's the weather? Uh, how the, how's the weather back home? It's very nice and crisp in your words. <laughs> uh, it's better. It's better. Yeah. Is it still raining? Uh, it hasn't rained for a couple of days, but it's very chilly. So we yeah. like it like this. Yeah, it feels like a butchery. Yeah. <laughs> you know, many, many years ago, when I was much younger, there was something I realized about going near the Kutuka airport. Whenever we were going to see somebody off or go and pick somebody up from the airport, when we got to that, that area, then the weather was just cold. Even if it was a hot day, that place was always cold. <laughs> I don't know if Adam can relate, but Dennis, have you, can you relate to this? Have you ever passed by the airport and felt like, hey, this is abnormally cool? The airport is preparing you for, you know, the weather outside. So it's, you it's perfectly normal. <laughs> you see, you see, like, I get it when it's inside, but when you're outside minding your own business, trying to spy planes, it shouldn't be so chilly. Anyway, Adam, <laughs> I see you. Feel free to request the mic. Let's, let's do this. So, today's conversation, Kali. This conversation, dear me, I'm biased. This conversation is for me to get advice. This conversation is for me to get advice. And, and I'll get into it about why, what, what shenanigans I'm up to that I need advice for. Because I have a funny feeling that in a few weeks, I'll, I, I, I may end up going to do something very emotional. So mm-hmm. let's, it's good that I come to my people and they will have a conversation about emotional spending. Hopefully other people can relate because this, these things always happen to us. Well, let me greet our big man, Adam. Adam, how are you doing? Hey, 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 man. How are you doing? Wonderful. Wonderful. I can see that you are, you are in your limousine coming from the Palace Project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say you're home? Because <laughs> if, if you're home, it's, it's tough to hear because it's, it sounds muffled. So if you could just check your equipment. It reminds me of the old mm-hmm. radio, radio uh, stations. Do you see... Pinch him with feed, you know. Twist your antenna or something. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can hear you well. Okay, so <laughs> Adam, let's try it again. I... Yeah, I heard the early game. Okay. Uh, ah, good, good, good. This is better. I think now you've got to sit. Wherever you are sitting right now, stay there, freeze. Stay for you. Uh-huh. Anyway, so to get into today's conversation, we're going to be talking about emotional spending. Every now and then, you know, we'll, we feel like doing something. We feel like YOLO, or we may be sad or something. And, and what to make an expense? Usually, an expense you've not planned. All right. So, first, let me, let me set the stage by defining what I think is, or yeah, how I understand emotional spending. It's when you purchase items or services in response to emotions rather than out of necessity or planned decision making. It usually happens when people want to change their mood through shopping. You've met, you've all met some people who say they like shopping. Sometimes somebody will be bored and they will say they want to shop. In fact, this thing has happened to me before. There was one time in my, in my, I think it was, was it national? I wasn't, no, nah, it wasn't national service. Probably my second year of work. If you are counting national service as year So two years after university, I'm working really long hours. And I used to work like 18 hour days, six days a week. Then finally, go and pull like eight days, eight hours. And I got to a point where Charlie, you know that thing happens and you just you just feel like a zombie. One time I just I, I just got up from the house and I walked to Koala. I really just I just went, I was just walking. I was just walking and I saw Koala and I just entered. Or I must have felt like going inside there and I called some family members. Hey, do you need anything? Do you want chocolate? Do you want this? Do you want that? You know, it's that was some kind of emotion. Whether it's an emotion out of boredom or stress or whatever, but it's not something I planned to do. So that's an example of emotional spending. I'm, I'm, I have many other examples and I'm sure we all do, so we'll get into that. But Adam, how about you? Do you have any any experiences for yourself of emotional spending? Please shock the fans because I heard that people think you don't know how to be emotional spending. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Elikim. 
I think every one of us should have been emotional in spending once, at least once or in our lifetime. At least we are humans. <laughs> yeah, we have to check. Yeah. Maybe we are Android. Maybe, maybe. We have to check. Oh. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, so basically, uh, I think one the time I normally fall for that kind of yeah, yeah no emotional and uh, sort of um, how do they call this one? Uh, this when you oh uh, the word just escaped me when you buy something unplanned expense uh, that's those sort of things they impulse they, they, buying impulse buy exactly they kind of move hand in hand. You know, and for me, I it always happens when I have not um, prepared properly, and then I enter <laughs> the the mall. <laughs> then <laughs> before I would come out, I know I would have done one emotional expense or the other, not necessarily because I need it, or not, and and sometimes some it just to make me feel good or something. And then later you come back home and when you are doing the math, that's not math. And then Charlie, you, you, you hit yourself a little bit and then you're like, hey, nah. So for me, that is normally how it, 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 it happens, uh, to make myself feel good. Or when maybe sometimes I receive some windfall, be that I was not really expect, expecting with then Charlie, you see that all of a sudden something that I wanted to do some time back and then I just, go and buy it, not necessarily because I need it, but, you know, sometimes it's just to make yourself feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff we do to make ourselves feel good. Then later we'll be sitting there contemplating our life decisions. Amazing. Dennis, how about you? Ever had that experience? Yes, I think I share your experiences as well. Um, sometimes, I think back in school, uh, a few of my friends would be having fun here and there and there. You would forgo all those things to focus on more productive things. So, but then it will reach a time where you start questioning yourself. Oh, so, yeah, the things you are foregoing, I mean, you are not any better than them in the interim. So I will just, I mean, walk to the food uh, where they sell their food and then splurge on something I normally would not buy. And at the end of the day, you come back and then, calculate your funds and realize hey, you went over budget. So <laughs> it, it happens like that. Sometimes, mostly it's negative emotions most of the time, but I've also been through it before. Okay, that's cool. You, you, you watch other people enjoy life and then you yourself, you're like, you know what, this time, YOLO. So you, Charlie, in fact, you, I have one experience about Christmas. Just remind me in case I forget. But let, let's keep it pushing. So the kind of, we need to be aware of the kind of emotions that can lead us to spend money, right? Any anyone wants to tell us some of those emotions? But in what states do we need to be careful? Or well, I, I drop a quick word: um, happiness. For example, when we are celebrating things, we are happy. And I mentioned the bonus has landed. It's a wedding, so everything is like there's no budget. It's like, oh, it's my wedding! Oh my God, it's my wedding! So no no cost to spend. Uh, you think about um, celebration, maybe a graduation, a birthday. Yes, birthday. People like that. Far. They don't want to take trip. They want to go on. Uh, ex- uh, they want to buy expensive gifts. Like you know, when when it's, it's about when it's induced by the, that, those feelings of happiness. You know, yeah. Any other feelings, Adam? Any feelings you can think about? Um, I for some people, for me, it doesn't come to me, but I know of some people that when they feel alone or some kind of depression seems to want to set in, they feel the vacuum by going to shopping. And so that's another feeling. When you start feeling down, or I don't know how common it is, but I know I know at least someone that is quite close to me that, uh, I mean, that's used to do that. So when they get into a certain sort of business, because they will get the fulfillment out of buying stuff, you know. Uh-huh. So it's also another feeling when maybe you are feeling down or lonely or something, then they want to go out and then go and shop or something. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I I can think of an example from the um, series we've been watching, which we would continue next week. How to get rich on Netflix. There's there's one of the characters in there who through his childhood because he had lost his parents, people were the people around him were always 
trying to soothe him with gifts and money and that kind of thing. So it became a habit of his, and he's always used spending money to um, manage sadness. So yeah, sadness is, is another one. And also, like similar to the another purpose of the shopping thing is boredom. Sometimes you're just bored and then you'll be window shopping. I mean, this concept of credit cards that we don't have in Ghana, I think is a good idea. I'm hearing somebody is talking about introducing credit cards to Ghana or, not, well, not credit cards, buying stuff on credit. <laughs> so, you buy a phone and you pay what? Is it one CD a day? <laughs> Whatever or what. <laughs> well, we'll have a separate conversation for that. But having a credit, having access to credit so easy without so many checks, man, it's it ruins a lot of people in the Western world, especially in the US. So it would feed, it would just feed that emotional spending because you don't feel the pain of money leaving your account as it's happening. It's later when the credit card comes due, then now you start talking about debt forgiveness and all that. But you that's a story for another day. Anyway, um, there's also uh, stress. Uh, the example I gave was also from stress. Sometimes I just stress that thing. They, they say this thing about people, uh, at least in, in developed markets. You work so hard, you make a lot of money, you don't even get to spend the money. So sometimes those people, fact, uh, yeah, when 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 they when it's time to spend money, then they just be blowing it. In fact, it's not just in the Western world. I know I had a friend whose sister was working in oil and gas, an engineer in Ghana, and you know they spent months offshore and then months onshore so it's like when when she comes back onshore yeah Charlie Paul there it's a party you know so it's those kind of things just to relieve stress you know so that's another thing and then there's this concept that people bring up of YOLO when you get into that I don't know if I can describe it as a as, as an emotion but sometimes people just go like YOLO you only live once and then people just want to splash you always want to blow money like Dennis you know, Dennis will go YOLO and spend like 10,000 CDs in one night. Big man, so you understand? But I that's just, it's, it's, it's in the night because it's in his dreams. It's not yet come to reality. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so yeah, those are some of the emotions. Um, yeah, they, they, emotions run high in special events like weddings, people want to splurge, Charlie, birthday parties, special occasions. When it's something, sometimes some people is when it's something to do with their family, then it's like okay, from the family, I'm just gonna go all out. I wish Mimi were here, but I remember some time back, Mimi says something. I don't think it's quite emotional spending because it was planned, but then when it's time to shop for her boys, that that one dear Charlie, she doesn't even want to. She doesn't want to spare any expense. She would spend the money buying things for her her sons, you know. So yeah, how, how about family? Does anyone have any? perspective of an experience maybe you or somebody else you observe maybe there's somebody that they just can't resist spending money when it comes to their family yeah okay. mm -hmm. i think family mm. family for me it's very tough to say no <laughs> in my family so uh, for me if i do some emotional spending i think there's even one uh, that is spending <laughs> there's a bill I have to they, they bill you <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite tough you know with, with, with family like what, uh, what you were saying concerning what maybe say when it comes to uh, children go all out you know and it, when it comes to my family I find it a bit a bit tough especially my parents and um, it, it can be tough in some cases I can understand certain people even when they go to me. I try not to go I mean, over too overboard, but some cases yeah, I can understand people because if you don't take care, then gaslighting also starts. You know where you are in a, you are with your family, and then you want to, and then for the next thing you realize it is being used against you. So I can understand why it is it's a, it's a quite a tough talk. But you know, there another you didn't talk about the other one relationship. Or people in love relationship. <laughs> that one day, yeah, Dennis is the expert in that one. Hey, so I'll need to talk about it. Yeah, you talk matter. Yes, Dennis, what do you have to tell us about love relationships and how people spend their yeah. things? <laughs> I'm not the expert on that, please. I'm, I do so have an experience to share post, to share on the family happening. side. So on, uh, this is not the family matter. This is not, this is not a family oh. matter. This is, <laughs> this is love matters. So, you know, um, campus especially, Cali campus, 
you know, you 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 That's recently it. left campus. How how was the vibe on Val's day? I mean, what were the things people were doing? On Val's day, <laughs> or you go for prayer meetings yeah, if, on Val's day? Mm, if you had, if you're a guy and you had a lady on Val on, on campus on Val's day and you did nothing for them, I mean, you don't have a lady. Let, let's just put it like that because. Early in the morning, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., people will hire saxophones, be making a lot of noise, delivering gifts, a lot of owls ow, here and there. So, I mean, you would also, there's small no of you have in your wallet. Or sometimes you have to take quick loan to buy some cake or something. I mean, it happens, it happens. So, Emotional spending, relationships, it happens. I think I agree with that. Then. It's a very big factor for relationships. Ali, hmm, it's not easy. Some boys, they pay. But even, you know what, in all fairness, in all fairness, maybe some 10, 20, maybe 15% of the time, some women to do a lot of emotional spending on that side. This one, they are very biased. Come for me. Yeah, I'll take it. But anyway, yeah, Adam, how about you? Have you observed these things where, how have you seen that love has has um, impacted people and they are spending? Oh, I think it is one of the most, I, I, I think it's a big deal in, in, in relationships and now, especially, in, you know, now, when you even listen online you see, or you, you read stuff online, you realize that money is playing a very big role in, in, in relationships. So emotional spending is in relationships is so high because people actually will do things that they would otherwise not do if they were just taking a rational decision. You know, a lot of people have bought stuff they've not even bought for their parents. They've bought <laughs> a lot of spent money. They've taken people to places that uh, uh, they, in their wildest imagination, they never thought they would go there. But it's relationships is a major driver of emotional spending. And for me, if I am talking about it, I see a lot of people fall into it because it is, you know, love is, is an emotion. There's the emotional part of it. So it's, you cannot really expect too much of rationality when it comes to that sometimes, <laughs> you know, so people would definitely move with their emotions rather than to say they are trying to rationalize something, you know. So um, that is what we see a lot of times. And unfortunately, I've realized that some relationships have been reduced to uh, more or less uh, transactional or uh, uh, monetary stuff. And for me, that is the thing that pains me, uh, where people uh, have reduced this. And because if you are not able to do that kind of emotional spending, then it means you are not able to sustain a relationship because there's always this agent, 500 CDs here, or oh, uh, 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 um, I need some immediate thousand for something. I need something for this. I need something for that, you know, and all of that. All like Dennis was giving the example. Oh, it's, it should be okay where maybe, for example, this year you are going through a tough time or something and we cannot do your dream birthday uh, party or surprise or something like that. We should be able to, it should be fine. I That's my feeling that it should be fine that, oh, maybe for this year, one or two reasons, so we can't do that. But if you, your inability to do that kind of spending is the reason why somebody will not take you serious, then it becomes an issue. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say here, that it's, it has reduced this kind of emotional spend. If you are not able to do it, then Charlie, your, your, your sample size is very small. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. Charlie, I totally understand you. I totally understand you. And you, uh, someone was telling me about, especially uh, Nigeria, the pressure that is given to boys, even boy children. Look at what your mates are doing. Look at what your mates are doing. So that whole money driven mentality. Right, and you talk to people at least around here in the US, people go like, Oh, now it's like people don't. When, when you look at relationships, it's like, What are you bringing to the relationship? And they think there's a certain divide for some people where it's like, Well, they thought the man just brings money to the relationship, and now women have money too. So, like, what are you bringing to? Thankfully, there are people like that. But there's still a large chunk of people that are like, well, and then we say, like, you gotta bring money, 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 money. So it's, it's really tough out there. Charlie, speaking of which, eh, there was some matter I had to settle, but the thing, we've, we've not even finished settling it. Somebody is like, 
because you have to plan and uh, budget for gifts for somebody you're in a relationship with or you're talking to and things. It's not romantic. This matter. Just like you will have a budget, you have a line item in the budget, but still that one is unromantic. No, no, no. You should be able to blow over the blow through the budget without even thinking about it. Yeah, you can even have a plan, but you just actually hmm, pressure. Anyway, this is roadside. They keep you updating know, the PDF, eh? Bro, they, they update the PDF like the Word documents. Tally. We might they, they might as well just go on Wikipedia and let us use to go there because they need to update they, they when they do it so they need to send a memo to the whole brotherhood. But well, anyway, keeping it moving. So now um we've seen some of the events, some of the emotions that are behind it. So now it becomes a question of I it's, it's like these emotions are not necessarily bad. Yes, I wish we would not be sad. I, I really wish we would not be sad. It happens, okay. But um it becomes a question of what about happiness? Doesn't mean when we are happy we shouldn't do anything. Doesn't mean when we are bored we shouldn't try to fill it with something. For example, I went to buy Legos some time back. It's not like I blew too much money, but yeah, I knew I was bored, so I did it. Like we do things out of board because we are bored. It motivates us to do other things. So is it entirely bad? Well, in a few, in a couple of moments, next we'll be talking about what are the risks, what are the disadvantages of letting our emotions get the best of us when it comes to spending. Uh, but before then, we'd like to take Eric. Eric has some thoughts on this uh, emotional spending, especially related to relationships. Eric, Eric, if you are speaking, you can unmute and speak. Okay, we may have to circle back to Eric in a moment. Um, so yeah, let's let's talk about the emotional, the 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 risks and the disadvantages of emotional spending. Adam, can you think of any of any such? What could be so wrong with just allowing our emotions to you know determine how we spend money? Oh, well, yeah. I think even just last week when we were discussing um, uh, how to get rich um, series, we realized somebody who was emotional in spending and the, the, what it brought about. I mean, one the number one risk is that you always be broke. If you're, like, I mean, or most of the time be broke if you are not careful because you are going to be spending money which you haven't planned. And the funny thing is that by the time you sit down and say you are doing the math, you realize that all the money that you have received, you've really spent it. So... If you are not careful, you would always be broke. And then it will lead to other issues, which I, I believe that maybe Dennis and yourself, you also throw more light on it. But I think that's your number one risk. You are always going to be broke. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you can't be with R2 bs Refuse to be broke. You understand? <laughs> so uh, this guy, Chris Daniel said, RTID, rich till I die. If you let your emotions take you there, yeah, you'll be broke till you die. Okay, that's a good one. Dennis, how about you? Any any other thoughts on what could go wrong? Um, so if you take the example I gave about um, Dennis, hold on a second. If you, uh, I'm hearing some echo, maybe you could just check with Eric if his speaker is on or is it better? Yeah, it's better now. Yeah. Okay, so it could also lead to accumulating debt. So in the case where you don't have the funds to, but you are really feeling the emotional urge to splurge on something or someone. You could it could lead to increased use in your loan, your credit card line, or the loan line you have, and this could be recurring. So you wouldn't finish paying off the first one; the second one will come, and then the next, and then the next, and then by the time you realize you have so much debt that you have to take care of. Ali, you know, it's, it's a cycle that just won't end. A cycle that won't end. It's a vicious cycle. And then and then sometimes it becomes a sunk cost thing because maybe out of emotion, you went to make a decision that you knew that if you were level-headed, you wouldn't have made that decision. There was a time that I, one of my worst financial decisions, which is kind of related to another one that I'm trying to make. <laughs> I bought a card back in the day, 2015 Hyundai Elantra. Oh, that car was... <laughs> I knew my budget over Charlie. Like, this car would be nice. But anyway, um, then it started having issues, and then you just keep sending bad money. You keep sending good money after bad money. Just send good money after bad money. But it's all started with a bad decision in the first place, right? So, yeah, good, good point there. It's even worse if there's debt involved in it. Well, a, a few things, a few other, um, for me is, when, when you allow your emotions to get over you, it's, at this point, it's not even about just money. It's it's just about regulating your emotions. It's a skill that we generally need to have. 
and money is just one of the ways that could be affected if you don't regulate your emotions, right? So on the money side, you have you have certain habits, like Dennis mentioned, always going on the credit card if you have one, always always going to ask friends for money to try to end the the month. See something impulse buying, you say no, I don't have the money now, but I'll, I'll pay over six months. You know, always those things they just they start and they just don't stop. I'm sure we all know people who earn a lot of income, way more than ourselves. And yet, they are always complaining or they are always looking like, Charlie, times are tough. Then you ask, what do they spend all their money on? They don't have, they don't have a spouse and children. They don't have nothing. They, 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 live, they don't pay rent because they are living at home or something. You know, so they don't have responsibilities and you don't get it. But some of these things are really about it, regulating your emotions. Um, so then uh, let's see if we can get Eric back. Eric, are you there? Yeah, hello, I'm here. Wonderful, Eric. Yeah. Welcome to Money Convos. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. I yeah. hope everyone is doing well, though. Everyone is good. I heard that you've been spending a lot of money on relationships. <laughs> and you're coming to confess all your sins. Then they sold me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do, wait, in fact, quickly, do, do you guys know about um, Mr. Macaroni on YouTube, uh, Instagram, he's a skit comedian. Yeah. Every time he's giving women money, but he never they get some job. Never working out, but he's still giving them the money. But so Eric, can you relate to Mr. Macaroni? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Not it's not a no, but it's, no. A, it's a not really. Okay. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll mute myself now and allow you to confess. <laughs> uh, so so yes, um, with love being an emotion that drives you know people into um, impulse buying, you know, spending without planning. I think I've actually experienced this in the past. Um, I'm an introvert; I like to stay indoors, you know. But in the past, I realized that I got myself dating people that you know love to go out, you know, be out and all that. So. Um, usually I would take them to places that on a normal, I wouldn't go. And I'm very strict when it comes to, you know, managing my expenses, you know. So usually when I take these ladies out to the places where on a normal, I wouldn't go. And I come back home, then I look at my ex and I'm like, oh my God, did I just spend this on Uber? Just Uber from this point to that point. On a normal, I would have bought Trotsky. You know, <laughs> then <laughs> you take the you take a lady to a restaurant that on a normal you wouldn't go. You know, you spend days on trips that on a normal I wouldn't go. I'd rather be in my room watching Netflix or reading. So yes, um, love is is one of those emotions that you know causes people to spend. And speaking about the effect of this emotional spending, one thing too that I have come to realize, and it's based on my experiences, it tends to create a standard, right? So people have these expectations of you. When you, usually when you spend out of emotion, and for instance, out of love, you don't, you spend way too much. And that becomes like the standard. So people hold you to it. So as time goes on, they expect you to be able to keep up with that standard. And then the, the moment maybe you you start to fall below that standard, they think you don't like them, you know. And that is where the idea of how much you spend in a relationship determines how much you love the person. So yes, I think in the long run, it creates a standard, even family-wise. Family-wise, if you're the type that maybe on Christmas Day, everybody will feel nice. Like you spend hugely on, on, on everybody then it kind of creates this standard. They tend to expect something from you every time it's Christmas and relationship aspect as well, yeah. Ali, this thing you said, facts, facts only, facts only. It's, uh, yeah, let's, let's not make this a gender thing, all right? It was one person's experience, it's certain people's experience, and it's if you have to be the one spending on, um, always you to interact with someone you always have to spend money to interact with someone and especially if you are not even getting to know the person <laughs> if, if for, for those in the diaspora listening to the people in the u.s the, the people especially ladies in the big cities new york city atlanta la dallas houston especially pardon my friend where a lot of nigerian 
big spenders have been to in this pause the market and increase certain standards like eric was saying there's a lot of entitlement there's a lot of expectation that well if you want to get to know me you must spend a lot of money nah if you want to get to know me we can go and sit at a park and sit on a bench and have a have a drink you can eat ice cream i've been eating a lot of ice cream lately it's all i'm saying it's all i'm saying we can eat ice cream it's not it's not expensive we can do something if it's about getting to know each other, right? And uh, not to rehash the whole thing, but just thinking about what Eric said, it, it reminds me of some advice that we've given Dennis before. I think we even said it on the show. Love, and this this goes to men and women, everyone. Love, you know, spoil the person who loves you. Don't spoil somebody to make them love you. Spend money on somebody who loves you. Don't spend money to make somebody love you. We've not gotten to the end, but I had to drop this one, this piece of advice. Please remember, it's something that we all need to learn. It's, and and in my in my dating experiences, the people who have been comfortable not going on fancy fine dining, not dress up and go on dine, go to do fancy things on the first date, it has been more sustainable. It has been a healthier dynamic. And it's not it's not coming from a place of using poverty to say nonsense. Thanks be to God, those days are behind me. It's just annoying. It's just annoying. I gotta gotta come and spend a lot of money just to see if we like each other. What if you may like me, but I don't like you? Then that's just money gone. Anyway, anyway, let's keep it pushing. So we 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 are aware of these um these these uh disadvantages that come up with spending emotionally. So many things could go wrong. You would you would put yourself under financial strain if you are putting if you are borrowing money to do these things. It's gonna be bad. You are setting certain unreasonable standards, whether it's in a relationship or with your family. You know, if people are always guilt tripping you into buying stuff for them, paying for this, paying for that, that's a problem. You know, you setting certain expectations. I have a friend like the person is a, in, is has gotten to a place where times are tough, but the family is still keeping those expectations, and he's not even updated them about the changing scenario in his settings. You know, he, he's not let them know that the economy for me is not going too well. But you know, he's still maintaining that pedigree that they have for him, and so they are still making those demands. You know, so people won't care. I had was it a, a footballer? I think it was a footballer. Um, was it Michael Isien or Adebayo? Somebody said I think it was Emmanuel Adebayo. In an interview, he said, "In fact, I've forgotten who it was." An African footballer. It was a YouTube video about why. Uh, about what the financial strings that footballers, African footballers go through. So they talk to African footballers. And one of them said, there was a time when he was injured and a family member, like, the family members are always calling him just asking for money. And he was injured. Like, if you people care, you watch his matches, right? And he was injured in a match on TV. He's not played for a while. And a family member called and just straight away just asked for money. Didn't even ask him, how are you? Did not even ask, how are you? Just asking for money straight. I had, I had a client some years ago. He was a medical doctor. When he was working back in UK, he said people used to call him and it's like, it's just an ATM. He's, he, 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 he got to a point, he just felt like he was an ATM, you know? So it's kind of similar to black tax, but when the emotions are driven by family, you know, it's, we could also call that black tax. Anyway, but yeah, main problems with that, so it becomes an issue of okay, we don't want to suffer these problems. What can we do about our emo- about emotional spending? What can we do to regulate our emotions? What can we do so that we don't have these problems? Or well, let me just kick it off and say, I think emotions are good signals. All right, emotions aren't bad. If you are sad, it's trying to is your body trying to tell you that something is up. Pay attention. It's like a check engine light. Pay attention so that you can do something about it. All right. So the emotions are there. We just need to regulate them and channel them in a way. When we know it's, we really can't do much about it, then we need to prevent ourselves from getting into certain situations. Don't take certain decisions. Um, when I go to a, uh, when, when I, there are certain procedures that you do in a hospital, when they put you under anesthesia, they may be like an endoscopy or something. They'll say that, don't make any serious decisions today for the rest of the day. <laughs> can get back to proper functioning as an adult tomorrow. You know, so when you're emotional, you, you need to be careful about the kind of decisions you make. So it's true, it's valid. We are not trying to invalidate anyone's emotions, but the question is, how do you channel those emotions? I think the key thing is, right, just plan ahead. You know, there's a graduation gonna come. Now, when you're spending the money that you save diligently for it, you know that, okay, fine. 
So yeah, that's that's the first thing I'd say. But I don't want to take too much from the others. Dennis, what about you? What do you think is a good way to to avoid emotional spending or manage it? So I think you you are spot on on the. I mean, for the happy moments, most of them can be planned. But for the more negative ones, I think first of all you need to know yourself and know your triggers. What triggers you? Because they mostly come unexpected, and you need to know yourself, know what triggers you. You need to, there's always a pattern. When you look back, you realize that okay, whenever I'm feeling sad, I tend to buy more of this. I tend to buy more chocolate. I tend to buy more of this. There's always a pattern. You just have to sit down and look back and identify that. And then once you're able to identify that pattern and then that specific feeling that makes you splurge, then you could probably say, okay, I'm giving myself a cooling off period. I don't buy or I don't make impulse purchases in 24 hours, in 48 hours. Um, whenever I'm making a, a major purchase, I'll take this amount of time to think about it before I make the purchase. Else, if you, these emotions keep repeating themselves, you just keep buying, buying without thinking about it. So I think it's very crucial that you take time to assess which feelings, and you would know, when you sit down to think about it, you would know which specific feelings and which specific situations that you put yourself in that make you feel that way and make you splurge. So I think it's important to do a self-assessment of yourself and your feelings and then know what triggers you. And then from there, you can develop more healthy coping mechanisms to deal with that. I mean, bass, bass on bass, bass on bass. I like, I like the points that you've got. Knowing your triggers, and especially that cool off period before making the decisions. It's sometimes we think, oh, I want to get this, and then you go and come and go like, mm, maybe I don't want to do it. And when you actually do those emotional spend, it's that instant regret. You buy the thing, you come home, and you're like, yeah, why do I have this? One of the things that I really liked about uh, um, about the US is the the ab your ability to retain goods that you bought. But I'm looking at an item that I'm going to return to the store right after this conversation. Somebody dashed me a TV stand. So the TV stand that I bought, uh, they are going to collect their timber. Anyway, so um, yeah, it's here. Yeah, if you're in the West, at least you get that option. And you, your instant regret, you can send them back. After Black Friday, there are a lot of returns. Yeah, that happens. And then eventually it comes, these things come cheaper for people. But in places that you can't afford, that there are no returns good so are not returnable back in, back in ghana so <laughs> you have to be careful before you start spending these things how give yourself that cool of time great points dennis adam how about you any tips yeah elikem like you said i think it all starts with um, budgeting and uh, that's basically one of the most important things we all need to learn i mean everybody has to, you 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 cannot uh, 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 succeed financially without a budget and I think uh, the Ramsey says that, look, it's intentionality. You must be intentional. Nobody uh, accidentally wins a 100-meter race. Nobody accidentally wins a competition. You have to plan, prepare, and go compete. So the same way in our, in our finances, we need to plan, we need to budget, we need to look deeply and ask ourselves very, very, very um, deep questions and very, very tough questions sometimes, whether indeed the kind of things we are we, we we want to spend our money on is it worth it sometimes you have to ask yourself that question and then when i saw a quote earlier today um that says that um when you become emotionally charged you become rationally challenged okay so if you know that in that um, in that um, condition you will not be think you will not be thinking right just like um dennis said it's always important to slowly take certain decisions. Don't be in a hurry to to just decide. And you know, especially when the things are big ticket items, where the, the amounts involved are quite high, we need to think through them. And even sometimes, not even just big ticket items, but even some of the very, very, very relatively small and things that we think that are insignificant, especially if they recur, okay, they end up becoming huge sums of money if you look at a period like, let's say, one year or two years. So it's very important to think through all these things. And you see, that's why the budgeting 
is very important because every now and then you'll be reviewing your spending. And once you review your spending, you are asking yourself these questions that are these things I spent my money on? Is it very, very important? Is it worth it? Is it something that I should continue? If no, then you will take it out. If yes, and you think it's worth it, then like you said, you start preparing for it because your birthday doesn't accidentally happen. You know the date it is and you know when it is. So you always have to prepare for it. If you want to do a big party, then prepare for it. It doesn't just drop out of the sky that, oh, tomorrow is my birthday. No. You know, even next year, I know when my birthday is. Next two years, next three years. If Jesus starts, if God gives me life, I know when my birthday is. So if I need to do a birthday party, I need to prepare for it. And so as much as possible, we can prepare for as many things as possible. Even the things that we could not prepare for uh, or we don't know are going to happen. Like that's where our emergency funds and things come in, where really we say have this kind of uh, uh, fund in place where you are able to fall on in case something happens, where really now you want to help somebody. Like for example, right? if it's a family member, you want to help the person. And then it's really something that falls within the definition of the emergency. Then you can fall on it. Okay. So all these things, I believe that planning is very, very important. And then being slow to take some of these decisions to can help. Sometimes when you just sleep and wake up, you realize I really didn't need it after all. Okay. So sometimes the barrier to preventing you from emotionally spending is just to take a nap. By the time you wake up, you would know whether you really need it or not. Okay, so that I think that is what I will spe- uh, I will share on this one. Yeah, yeah, good ones, good ones. In fact, the last one when you talk about you going to take a nap and come back or sleep on it, there's there's another one that a strategy that people recommend. I'm going to discuss this with my wife, or I'm going to discuss this with my husband and come. You do sometimes you don't even have to go and discuss. You just use that to buy yourself some time. Just use that to buy yourself some time. Another thing I used to do, I used to buy myself some time when I'm thinking about these things is I keep a list. I, I, I hate shopping. So before I go enter any shop, I already have, I have a running list as I'm walking around in the house. When I need something, I realize, okay, tea roll has run out or it's left with two or three. And soap, this uh, soap is about to finish. Or I need, I need more cereal. I need this. I need that. I just be making the list. Then the day I enter the shop, I just go and pick the things I need. And I know the aisles that they are in. Get in there, work out. Sometimes I don't even go with the basket. Just pick what I need and go before I get tempted. You understand? Because if you leave me near the ice cream, if you leave me near the Kit Kats, I will see a new flavor I haven't seen before. It will be funny. So um, I just keep a list and follow that list. Another benefit of that list is over time, I revisit that list. And I go like, mm, I don't really need that. I don't really need that. So you just put it on your list. It helps you buy the, buy time. Yeah, with e-commerce these days, people don't put stuff on their list. It just goes straight to checkout. Leave it in your cart for a while, okay? Just just leave it in your cart. My Walmart cart has some things in there pending. Every now and then, I go and delete some, you know. So just let your Amazon, let your uh, Jumia, let your Gigi, if Gigi has a cart, like let put those things in the cart, okay? And just wait. Uh, let let air breathe on top of it, okay? All right, so um, we're gonna start wrapping up. But you you know you know what they say. There's this a uh, proverb or a saying in our local language that when the old person baths, then the water is finished. Our old our old man has come. Our gentleman himself has come back. I see that he's gone. He's dropped down to the audience again. But let, so let let's invite Prince up. Prince, we want to hear your your take on emotional spending before we start wrapping up. But um, a last point that I would want to talk about in terms of the strategy is accountability partners. For me, just coming here every week to come and talk about personal finance is, is a way of me being accountable. Me knowing that I have to explain myself to Edema, I'll tell Edema that, Charlie, you know, I went to do something. He won't question it, he won't, but it's just the fact that I have to tell somebody that, Charlie, I went to do the thing I went to do. You understand? Can I ca- keep coming here and telling people, oh, take, take good care of your money, blah, 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 do this, do that, and then me, myself, I'm misbehaving on the back end. Right, and so there's that. Um, but I, I, so I encourage everyone have an accountability partner, somebody that you have to explain yourself. To. Met some people who do not like the idea of explaining themselves to anyone. There are certain results that are waiting for you. 
But if you are taking decisions that no matter the situation, you can actually defend it, you can explain it, and it will make sense, and people will go like, you know what, that's probably a good decision. Sometimes it may be 50-50. It's okay. But if well-meaning people, knowing all the information, will go like, yeah, probably not, then maybe, you know, you need to ask yourself if that was a good decision in the first place. So strongly encourage all of us to get accountability partners. Speaking of the accountability partners, Charlie, guys, I have a conundrum on my head. Sometimes it's weird coming to put my personal business on the internet, but let, let, let's see how this goes. I me, mean, I don't celebrate birthday. Adam said we know where, where, when our birthday falls every year. Christmas too, I had not changed the date. Every year is 25th, so we, we can plan for that. I don't like to sell it. I don't like to make a fuss about things. In fact, my own undergraduate bachelor's degree graduation, I didn't want to go. Uh, master's graduation, I didn't want to go, but family came. So I so many things I personally, I don't like to celebrate. There are very few things I enjoy, you know. But I've been delaying uh, celebrating so many things. There have been many milestones. Um, some too personal to say here. Some, you know, Ivy League, MBA, get the dream job, you know, which I'm starting on Friday full time like so many things are, are worth celebrating you know and Charlie sometimes all you want to do is just buy a Benz that's all that's all you want to do it's, 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 that, it's really that simple so yes please let's let's have a quick debate should I yes or no and how much is too much is, should it, is G-Wagon too much or I should just buy a A-Class the tiny tiny one so I'm like and I, maybe I should buy one from 20 years ago please or I should just I should just go and buy Toyota Corolla. Or what do you all think, Dennis? We we want this. Mm, Dennis is the devil on the when, we when, want, when you watch cartoons. There's angel here, devil here. You want here. the best. You know I love my cars. You want the best. <laughs> you want the nice. GLE. Uh, the GLE. You want the best, please. Yo, I hear you. Adam, what about you? What's it now? <laughs> Ellie Kerry. <laughs> Why are you trying to tempt me this <laughs> evening? Hey. But you know where you know where you know where I would tend to us, so you know, you know you know. <laughs> Please say it for our audience to, to hear. Yeah, so I know we've had this conversation in the back end, but just yeah, you know, as an example yeah. of how the accountability goes. Oh media, media, honestly, I'll tell you to hold on. Hold on for mm. now. Okay. Uh, hold on, hold on for now. So that you not have too much car, you know. There's the the you see. He that is down needs fear no fall. So just take one step at a time. You will get there. The car, we will release it. Caleb, I've been taking the steps. Oh, oh many years care. of hard work. I know. I know it's many years of hard work. But you know that you just started a new phase. And you need to settle in that phase a little bit more. Yeah. And then so, uh -huh. are bringing his two wives. His two wives. Can't yeah, even, you can't just even. started a few. You can't you can't lock yourself with too much car at this at this point in time. You I'll need to stabilize in the feet. Pardon me. I'll buy a cheap one. A cheaper one. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> something small. Something small for the boys. <laughs> well, will you pay cash? No, but I'll be able uh -huh. to pay it off in six months. How six months. That? You are carrying too much risk. <laughs> Don't give me gamba, Italy. 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 You, I know, I know. Okay, I know Prince would be on my side. This one, dude. hey, Prince, you know that Prince likes <laughs> nice things. <laughs> I know he Prince likes, likes nice, nice things. Classic, classic man, but I know in this matter he will be on my side. <laughs> Prince, please, are you there? Um, okay, he waiting for Prince to accept it, and then, but yeah. Um, anyway, it's, it's it's still an ongoing conversation, and I guess we we will look at the numbers on the back end. To yeah, exactly. Make sense or not? Exactly. And because Charlie, we will we will model it. Uh -huh. Anyway, Prince, if you can hear us, check check your your settings and see if you can um you can join us. Okay, he's dropped back to the audience. Anyway, 
So, um, guys, any any final words that we have for people? Um, let me let me let me go first. I I just want to remind all of us that emotions are not bad. They are signals. Okay, they are signals about what um, what something that's going on, and we need to learn how to regulate it. It goes beyond just money, you know. Um, and also, we are not saying don't spend. We are just saying plan. Tell you. I remember last year when I was doing my internship, I was like, oh boy, this is going to be a shit ton of money. When I started drawing the budget, I was like, yes, I guess money will have to wait. I guess that he also has to wait before I start buying them gifts. Yeah. So, uh, because once you start putting pen to paper, you start drawing up the numbers and then you realize that the math is not math thing. That's one of the benefits of a plan, right? Plans, plans, usually, plans will, will fail. But the planning process is what's important. So when you take your time to go through that planning process, it really helps you to really think through these things before making certain decisions. So I encourage everyone to just spend, but plan before you spend it. That's that's it for me. Adam, how about you? Any words for our audience? Yeah, so just picking up from where you um, you left off, that we should also know that, yes, we, we talk about planning, we talk about budgeting, and we need to just be flexible in the way we go about what we are doing because obviously we cannot live life just based on rationality and without emotions. It's a blend of the two. It's important to know when to pull the brakes, to know when to stop, to know when to say, hey, this cannot go this, this far, okay? And it's very important that each time we go back to review. So like we mentioned, the accountability partners. Like surround yourself with people that um, you know that um, they can speak some sense and wisdom into your life, okay? And run certain important decisions by certain key people that you know that when they speak, they are going to give you much more insight or different angles which you would not have thought about. So it's very, very important to to do that and have it um, at the back of your mind that look, Yes, I am. I am. I'm happy, or I'm feeling sad, or something. But hey, it doesn't mean that I should go and break the bank because of that. Because in the end, you would end up crying and end up in a very, very sadder position than you were before you took those emotional decisions. Yeah. So it's and one way you can surround yourself with very, very, very important people is always keep coming back. You know, keep coming back here on Money Convos. You hear very, very important. And, and, and very, very, Prince will be dropping bars, Dennis will be opening and giving us keys. So it's very important to keep coming back here. Yeah, thanks. Yep, keep coming back here. It's it's uh, it's good good to find good company and keep that company. Right? Uh, so yeah. Uh, before we get to Dennis, Prince, are you there? Can you hear us? Prince, if you are speaking, you are muted. Oh, it's like the powers that be really don't want us to hear what Prince has to say on, on emotional spending. But we'll keep trying. We'll keep trying. Dennis, how about you? Any any final words? Yes. So, uh, final thoughts. I think it's important to highlight that we are all on a journey of self-discovery. And there will be bumps along the road. And maybe you may relapse at the beginning. There will be some emotional spendings here and there. And it's perfectly fine. You can't avoid emotions. They will come. But the goal is to not make them a habit and ultimately get rid of them and then not get rid of them, but become financially independent, you know. So it's perfectly fine if you relapse at the beginning. Just keep the goal in mind. Um, as I said in the beginning, try and know yourself better. Know what triggers you. Know how to control it. And keep coming here, just like Eden said. Think coming to Money Converse every week. I think the more you surround yourself with people who speak more about getting financially independent, you will get better at this. So... Yeah, that's those are my final words. Ali, Dennis, the older you get, the wiser you get to. Oh wow, I'm proud of you. <laughs> so, 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 please, I said wiser. I didn't say wise. I already wise. I'm just saying wiser because the banks you are dropping today, they are they are very quote with you. Because I like I like what you're saying about allowing. Yeah, sometimes mistakes will happen. Sometimes it will happen, but it's about not making it a habit. And that's what's important. You gotta give yourself grace for what's happened already, but don't make it a habit. That's that's a good one there, Charlie. Very good one. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and also speaking of keeping good company, people coming back. Uh, when you get on Instagram, right? Just 
beyond the wedding videos and the funny videos and the car videos and all those things, just just search for investment friend. You have an investment friend there. Look up at investment underscore friend. Then we go beyond what we do here on Money Convo, just speaking generally. Then we look at your individual situation and see how these personal finance and investment principles will apply to you. You get someone to run it by. Speaking of accountability partners, we have lots of challenges running all the time. There's savings challenge, you know, budgeting challenges. We have so many things. So you get to join a community of people. The community is growing strong. Hundreds of people are already joining. So you want to join in the like-minded people. At least you, once a week, you have somewhere to go that you know that this kind of thing, your iron will be sharpened when you get there. You know, so just go look up investment underscore friend on Instagram, right? Okay, for one last try, let's see if we have Prince. Yo, Ali, how are you doing? Tali, Prince, they are doing well. I can see that the, the way the internet or the phone was working, I realized that... Oh, Charlie, was, Charlie, if, if yeah, the internet, uh, I try, I try, and I know they connect. <laughs> uh, if they let you talk before the other uh, people talk, all the data is oh, now finished. Uh, oh, I beg. <laughs> so you've come to close us. You, you knew you knew what we we're talking about with him most now yes yes i think i was i was i was listening to it and um my 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 dear colleagues has done justice to the topic not much to say but i i just want to tell people that you should you you know where what you are about i mean when you know i mean your vision and your mission and your purpose uh it gash you when it comes to some of these things right so um People should take it cool because now the economy is very hard. You 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 have to think twice about what you are using your money for. Uh, sleep on it. Uh, get to uh, distinguish between your needs and wants. If it's something that you can do away with it, uh, try as much as possible to uh, stack that money somewhere and I mean live by the needed things that you you want in life. And I mean a time will come that I mean things will come around for you for you to uh, get whatever you want. Yeah. So. On that ticket, um, uh, also the accountability partner is very good. Um, even money combos, we have some good accountability partners on the call that um, you can partner with, um, can always check up on you, whatever you are doing, they can also provide guidance for you. And together we can build a community that uh, everybody will be financially independent. Yeah, so back on your on your issue of getting a car, I, I, I'll say I'll say that please don't get any car. Uh, please don't get any car. Thank you very much. Oh, that one day is it can't happen. I'm, I'm, I'm in Texas. You need a car to move around. That one. So if if you need if if you need a car to move around, then please hold on on the on the on what uh, on the on the Benz and the J wagons for now. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 you keep, you keep, yeah, keep, keep that for, for, for a while. You keep it for a while. It will happen. Don't worry. For now. No, 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 no. The bench, you are not ready for the bench yet. It will come. The right time will come for the bench. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, no worry. Okay, okay. Yes. All right. So you manage, manage with some some Corolla for us. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. Don't worry. Why? Charlie, yo, uh, Martin. Thank you very much for understanding. <laughs> Please, no, no, no. The decision is not over. We'll, we'll reconvene later. We'll reconvene later. <laughs> anyway, thank, thank you for chipping in with that one. Um, yeah, so just accountability partners are important, guys. You know, so let's let's keep these things in mind and let's Let's make sure that we are not making the emotional spending become habits. Well, thank you for t- uh, tuning in this week. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us. Um, next week, we are going to do episode seven of How to Get Rich. So if you've not watched that series, go on Netflix and just watch it. It's, it's talking about how people are living their personal finance lives. Their host is Ramit Sethi. He... He talks about personal finance. He's going through people's personal lives, their money lives. It's, there's a lot about money and relationships in there. And you see young people, older people. It's it's a blend. You would get some perspective in there and it will help in some of your decision making. And while you are to follow us here on uh, follow us here on X, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and while you're on Instagram, follow at investment underscore friend. 
And if you didn't catch us right from the top or you want to hear about hear uh, previous conversations or you want to share it with other people thinking, you know, this is good, other people should know about it, well, get on, on YouTube and just search for Money Convos. Subscribe, share the content, you get replays. Um, also, wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to your podcasts, just search for Money Convos and we would be there and we would love to have you keep listening to us. Please do spread the word. Thank you for making the time. Um, I would be taking a break from speaking live for the next couple of weeks. I'll leave it to my able colleagues to do that. I would, I may be just in listening mode because I'm in a transition and until we find a good enough rhythm, but you'll still be in safe hands. You can hear all the bars that everybody's dropping. So please keep coming. And yeah, next week will be an interesting conversation about how to get rich. So catch you then. Have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our thoughts. I hope you learned a thing or two and start practicing. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse and Facebook. And subscribe to our YouTube and podcast. Do tell a friend about Money Convos so we all become wealthy together. Talk to you soon. Bye.